I believe that you can be a mental machine. I think I win matches against better players, but just because I'm better here, I win against those players. And I really want you to feel that you can have that as well. Today I'm going to teach you how to become a mental machine. I'm going to start right now. Bubble. The first topic that we're going to discuss is emotional stability. I think you might know what it means, but maybe you don't know how you can train it. One of the things that I learned a lot about is the 16 second cure. There you can learn a lot about how you can become stable on the paddle court. What is a very good exercise to do and what everybody should do is whenever you or your partner make a mistake and it's like a bad mistake that you think, holy crap, how can I miss this ball? I am the worst player ever existing on this planet. I am going to play badminton now. That you might think that, but you're going to show zero emotion. So what a lot of players do, and when they make the mistake, is they look down, watching if they can find any coins on the ground, and they never can. If you're looking down, so if I'm looking like this, you can see that I am sad, I made a mistake. And then my opponents know, hey, you, I can see this guy, he's nearly crying on the court, I, I will probably beat him. If you make a mistake, and you think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play, play badminton, badminton now, I'm play, play, I quit I playing play paddle. paddle, I am the, I am worst, the worst player, player ever. ever. And you just look up and you turn away from the point. So what you need to do is when you play and when you hit a mistake, turn away and look up. Always look up. Because if you look down, you feel your emotion. If you look up, you are more reasonable and you might think about the tactics or what you should do next. And that's the mindset you need. And that's how you stay emotional stable because if all the bad shots you remember them, oh, this, this one is bad, oh, Bandeja against the glass, I, I, my back end is the worst in the entire world. You're not gonna play better. So just turn away from the net, look up and start playing clever. It's also important what triggers you. A bad call, does it trigger you? Do you get upset if I say out and the ball is not out? I think it would be pretty good if you experience that and you think, oh, this is where I normally get upset. Today is not the day. Today, I will laugh about it. So sometimes I had those matches where the people cheated against me and I played like a serve. It was perfectly in, perfectly in. And they say, out, out. Just a little, two centimeters. I'm honest. They need that to win the match. So it means that they are scared. They think that is a necessary thing to do to cheat against you to win. So I get a lot of energy from those players that cheat against me because I know they need it. A cheater needs it. So what I would do is I would say, oh, well, that's a very small service box. Oh, I didn't know the service box was this small. I don't want to go into the discussion, but I will say, oh, now you're saying out on a ball that is very slow. That's very strange. I think now everybody can see, even the crowd here on the sides, that you are cheating. So I don't know how you want to have your reputation on the court, but it's quite weird if you cheat. And I don't feel like that it's necessary. But if you want to cheat and if you want to win this way, no problem, you do it like that. Maybe it sounds weird to you or you get a little bit upset, but if somebody cheats, you need to destroy them on the court with that this doesn't happen. Never, never, never. If you are a paddle player and you're cheats, get out of the court. You may never cheat. If somebody cheats against you, don't cheat back. You're better than that. I highly, highly recommend to say, listen, I saw the ball in and let's play a let. If you don't want to play a let, whatever. I know that some points are tense, that some points it is very difficult. It is juice, golden point, somebody cheats. Remain calm. If you know you get triggered with it, remain calm. And you can also say, I'm certain that the ball is in. The ball bounced higher than it came in. So the ball was bouncing higher than 45 degrees. It is in. I'm positive that it was in. Can we play a lead? So these are ways that you can handle the opponents. And all opponents, you need to see what you need to say against them. So some people you need to make a joke like, oh, <laughs> that's a small service box. And some people you need to be very clear. I can say that I never ever lost a discussion in my life because I'm 100% certain that I am honest. And if you are not honest, you should never discuss points like this. So keep it real. So what triggers you could also be self-talk. A lot of players have a lot of negative self-talk that doesn't help. Bless you, somebody sneezed on this uh, court in the middle of my... This is triggering me, sneezing. You feel it? I'm angry. No, um, if you feel like that you're triggered by self-talk, it can also help. I think it was Justine Hinnin 
with a beautiful one-handed backhand. She wrote down positive pointers like, look at the ball, look at the ball, stay active, stay active. She wrote that down on a paper. It may not appear in her head because she's worried about a lot of stuff during the match. And now she was sitting on the bench when it was 2-1, for instance. She picked up the paper and says, stay active, stay active, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And maybe she wrote down, uh, I want two hamburgers. You never know, it could happen. I know Stan Wawrink, I was drinking a coffee during the match, so it could also help. But it's important that you write down something that helps you. So if you know you are a negative self-talker, maybe the other way around, the positive self-talker can help you out as well because you're probably active with words. So change it to the positive side. You have to ask yourself the question, am I close to the zone? And the zone is where everything feels like slow motion and where you're playing very, very good. Sometimes when I feel tense, when I feel like I'm a bit scared to play my shots or that the shots don't work. I start screaming vamos and benga very hard on the court because it relieves my pressure and I actually feel more relaxed after. <laughs> so I just had also a call with my coach before I made this video and he said, well, Sven, I saw it a lot of times that when you say vamos, or benga, most of the time you win the three points after the vamos. You don't want to do it too much, but it gives you a kind of confidence on the court as well. And it makes the, the tension go away. So screaming when you can, and sometimes you don't need to be like positive or neutral. Sometimes you have to say like, <coughs> cannot say it of course, but I will say something like, oh, that's unfortunately that I make the mistake. And then all the pressure goes away in a more angry way. Sometimes you need to be angry, but never throw your racket, yeah? Promise me. Ladies and gentlemen, just because I think you noticed that I'm now playing with Tactical Paddle as my new sponsor. And uh, these rackets, I think you've might seen the racket reviews are amazing. And this one, I'm gonna review pretty soon, but it's not out yet. But I'm testing it already so I can make a good review for you. So if you want to review fast, let me know. Team number two, leadership very important and it's also about when to lead and when not to lead so you have to know you have to feel to experience if you need to lead or if you need to follow if you're playing the match and I am playing better than my partner maybe I should be leading maybe if I play 24 balls in the glass straight away my partner would say hey Sven I was thinking maybe I should lead and if you feel like earlier that that's going to happen and sometimes you play nice shots so i have the momentum all my shots all went out of the court like ho, ho, uh, i should maybe take the leading also some people are more leaders than others and it's okay to follow and i think it's just as hard to lead as to follow but maybe for some players they are it's easier for them to lead and harder for them to follow so you need to design also your paddle team based on that but it also needs to change sometimes so you need to say with your partner if i'm playing bad you need to take over the leadership and if you have a good leadership you don't get seasick but how do you train leadership well what i want you to do is that you and your partner are going to play a match the first set you are going to lead and the second set, your partner is going to lead. I highly recommend that the person that is not leading is only asking questions or is remaining completely silent and trains their listening skills. And then the other way around. You can experience now who is the better leader or when you're playing your best paddle. Sometimes you might be the better leader, but if somebody other than you creates the plan and the tactic and the strategy, maybe you're playing better. So you need to find out what is the best possible team that you can get. Every cat has a tail, but not all the tails have a cat. Tell your best joke in the comments below. I'm looking forward to it. Leadership is also that you can recognize if your partner needs help, yes or not. So sometimes I was playing with a guy and I said, oh, well, uh, because the opponents cheated against us. And I said, well, that's a very small service box. And then my partner said, Sven, 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 please don't do this. So I said, okay, no worries. I give the point to him. So I was okay with that. Normally I cannot accept that somebody cheats the points against us, but he was like, Sven, no worries. We're gonna win anyway. So then I need to take leadership that I'm not gonna go to the other side of the court and make a point out of it. What also can happen is that my partner is getting upset and I go to him. 
okay, listen, what do you need? What can I help you with? Should we play differently to get me more into the play or do you want some different shots? You need to be a leader and not think, oh, maybe my partner is not playing well. Hmm, yeah. Well, let's see in a couple of games if it changes. Maybe it's too late and you lost. Team number three, attention control. It's all about focus and thinking about something and not thinking about the rest of the world. One of my coaches used to say, a lot of my students, they enter the court in their work clothing or with their shopping bags. So they're still entering the court with the mind in a different place. When you enter the court, your mind is here. I don't care what happened, but you need to think all of your thoughts need to be outside of the court. So you need to make sure that you're focusing on now, not in the past, but here. Very important. So how can you do that? There are a few exercises and tricks that you can use to improve your attention. What I like to do is the bounce hit warm up. So when I warm up in the court and I feel like I am still processing my entire day, I do the bounce hit. Whenever the ball is bouncing, I say bounce. Whenever I'm hitting the ball, I say hit in my mind. Bounce, bounce, hit. Bounce, bounce, hit. And the people that say bounce, hit at the correct time have the best timing. So some people say bounce and then it's not there. So you have to be very precise. You can also blow out. So when you hit the ball, you should always be relaxed. So you need to be This is amazing to become focused on the court. It's also good to analyze your opponent or to see what they're doing. It's also good to see the hairs of the balls or to see what brand ball you're playing with during the rally. Like, oh, Wilson, oh, it's Hughes. Oh, it's, I'm gonna name all the brands now. Visualization is the key of the focus, of the attention. What you need to do is to visualize where you are playing or where the tactic is going. Sometimes before or just after I played the point, I do a visualization about how I'm going to play the next point. So let's say serving to the glass. I actually see myself serving to the glass. Quick story, there was once that there was a man captured by the Japanese, I think in the World War II. This guy was a golf player and he was captured for a long time. I don't know how long, but more than a year. I think maybe five or 10 years, which is a big difference. Doesn't matter for the story. So this guy, every day he was visualizing the golf course on his club. He visualized the wind, the rain, different kinds of irons. And this guy came free. He went to the course and he played fantastically. He did a very, very good job in doing the course. I think it was a three or four on the par, very good. And it's actually correct that the visualization is just as strong as actual training. So if you can visualize very, very good, you can actually become better on the court. So you can get your crisps, your Coca-Cola, sit down on the bench, think about paddle and you can actually improve. So perfect for you. Team number four, fighting spirit. So this is like, are you Nadal or are you lazy and everything in between? So we want to get as close to Nadal as possible. It's also how to handle setbacks. So what is a very good exercise to get that fighter spirit going is to play matches where you say, okay, I'm 040 behind and I need to win the game. And you're going to try to win as many games as possible or you need to play a match and you need to play 20 balls in and then you can make the smash. So you have a very good spirit to be on the court, fight until you have the right moment to smash. What also would be good is I did an exercise with Santiago Moreno in Prodigipado Academy that I was going to the net and I was not allowed to play an overhead. So every time when they played a lob, I had to accept the fact I was not allowed to lob. I let the ball down and I played the ball back. This is a very good exercise to get like, oh, sh I can lob again. Okay, but you keep fighting to stay in the point and to win the point. I've been a tennis coach for many years and the, the 15, 30 second serve exercise was one of my favorite exercises. So I said, okay, you're losing 15, 30. You only have a second serve. And if you lose, you have to do 10 push-ups, and you get this fighter spirit. You train and you master to become the Nadal of the paddle. Team five, devotion. 
Uh, devotion is all about outside the court, in my opinion, about this part. So if you're playing a tournament tomorrow, do you have a very good meal, a very fat, high protein, some carbs in your meal that you already prepared for tomorrow? Are you aware that you should not drink any alcohol before you play? Um, all those things, do you pack your own bag? Do you carry your own bag? This is also important if you have kids that are playing paddle that do all those stuff themselves. Do I train twice a week? Or do I know that if I don't train, I don't get upset because I don't have a good reference? So you always need to have a good devotion outside of the paddle court. Do you do a warm up? Do you have a very clear goal when you're playing on the court? Do you know what you're practicing when you practice on the court? When you're playing a friendly match, do you want to win or do you want to learn something? Do you watch YouTube videos for like uh, this guy from Otro Nivel uh, to, to learn some stuff? Or uh, do you just think, ah, I can do it all by myself. Um, so you clearly already have some devotion, that's great. But what can you do to have more devotion before you hit the match? Let me know below what you're going to do before the match, that's going to make you improve a lot and win all of your matches. Team six, self-confidence. And I want to tell you how you can train that. What a lot of coaches think, if I play the ball into the record of my student and she or he plays the ball over the net, hey, they're going to be very good and they are self-confident. But that's not completely true because it's a completely fake situation. If I play the ball into your racket and you play the ball back, it is as easy as possible. You're not getting better from the comfort zone and you're not getting confidence from the comfort zone. So what do you think will give you more confidence? Running five kilometers or running a marathon? So I think you need to upgrade your standard, go outside the comfort zone and train something that you cannot do yet and then you're going to improve your self-confidence. Also, what is very important is that you're, uh, you're knowing that you improved. So if you feel like you're not having a good day, maybe it's better to focus on your good shots and not on your bad shots. So let's say my forehand is amazing, my backhand is moi. Then if I want to upgrade my confidence, it is better to do a, maybe a semi-difficult exercise with my forehand and to make that a weapon and win points with my forehand new weapon. And because of that, I win matches. And if you are nice, you think, hey, I'm quite confident, maybe work on your weakness to improve that as well. So I think if you do it this way, and I highly recommend to train your weapons more than your weakness, because it can win you points and have that confidence. Confidence is very important, and sometimes it's just gone. Once I was listening to a talk from Magnus Norman, is the coach of Wawrinka, and Wawrinka came to him. He was number four on the world ranking that time, and Wawrinka was like, my backhand is gone. He's so like, wow, you have the best backhand in the world. And this was an eye-opener for me that every single pro player has this. So if you are a Rinka and you look at his backhand, it's insane. But he still has like this thing like, I don't have a backhand anymore. So it can happen, but it's temporary because you know you have a good shot and you need to play it with confidence. So get it. Vamos. Vamos tío, come in, andiamos. Sometimes it's not very clear that you're improving. So what I think you should do is like exercises where you can see an improvement. So let's say I make a box, you play in the box, and every time you play in the box, you get a point. You do five minutes, every ball in the box is a point. If you do this, every time you start to train or every time you start to play a match, and you know that in those five minutes, every single time or sometimes you get a higher number, you know that you're improving and that can give you confidence. Like, hey, I did two last time, now I did 25. Holy moly, I am better today than I was yesterday. So I think it's good to have a very clear goal in mind and to get to that goal and to have it very clear what the improvement is. Because winning a match or losing a match it's not always a clear goal because your opponents can be bad, can be worse. So it's better if it's an exercise like this. Number seven, self-knowledge. And this is not written by many books. This is something my coach came up with. He knows a lot about mental part. I need to get him on the show as well. Uh, on the show. Nice. Self-confidence. I uh, think I have a show. <laughs> okay, so this is self-knowledge. You need to know what you can and what you cannot. And we need to make the blind spots that we have from ourselves as small as possible. 
everybody has a blind spot and you need to ask people to review you so they can make your blind spot, which is here, I cannot see that, smaller. So what I want you to do is you're going to play paddle. You ask a friend, which you think is an honest person, to review and give three pointers on your movements. Discuss it with them because you might be low to the ground. You might say, yeah, I am low to the ground. When I play in defense, I am very low to the ground. My knees just nearly touching the ground and you're actually just not low. Or yeah, I have a low preparation, yeah, I swear, my, my preparation is, is, is on the ground, uh, I have a very low preparation. And then we look at your preparation and it's like here, that's not completely true. Or with the bandeja also, a lot of times. So this can also be technical. Yeah, no, no, my preparation is, uh, my preparation is here, always, always uh, here when I do the bandeja. And then you're here. And I know because I am doing this myself and I just ask people, hey, Friend, do you think I'm low to the ground? Uh, or how did I play today? I'm asking a lot of questions to other people, like how did you solve the match? Why did, did you win today? Why did we win today? To discuss it. And I like to go deep on that, maybe too much, and I blah, blah, blah. I overthink everything, story of my life. This will make your blind spot smaller and you will learn a lot from that because there's a lot of things you can learn from others about yourself. I made this video for everybody that uh, said, yeah, I want to see more videos about the mental part. So here it is. So if you want to see more videos like this or different kind of topics, just comment below and I will not do it. So, um, hasta luego, ciao, adios.